Hey everybody, how are you? Hello there. Uh, we're doing one of these little Zoom, to, direct Zoom to Facebook uh, gatherings here. See if anybody's going to call me and if we, uh, if we can then, uh, oh, well here comes somebody already. It's already connecting to our, to our program. Uh, 12062, who is this? Can I hear you? Are you talking to me? No, it's not coming through there. Okay. We're waiting to hear from you. Hello. Um, can't hear you. Don't hear anything. So I think I'll probably get rid of you. Uh, let me see here. Uh, do, we have a, do we have a waiting room? No, oh, wait a minute. We have someone over there. Who is this? Well, he doesn't have his audio on, or her, she doesn't have her audio on, or whatever. So let me uh, get rid of them. Okay. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, stop video chat. Where do I go here? Then so remove. There we go. Okay, remove. All right. Anyway, so I'm uh, just here, and I thought I would just go on and, and try doing one of these just pop-up shows, as it were, uh, for some of you people out there, if you're, uh, if you're inclined. All you have to do is just click on the link that is on the uh, – let me make sure we're up on Facebook okay right now. Uh, there's a link. It should be a link on Facebook. Let me see here. There we go. There's a link and see right above, right? It says join zoom meeting. And then it uh, says, uh, uh, it gives a link and you just click on that link and that's how easy it is to call me. Um, I don't know if, if, the, if nobody calls f fair enough, I'll just, uh, get out of here and, go do some other things. I got dinner to cook tonight anyway. I'm making my chicken um, uh, with wine sauce. So anyway, that's my, my whole, my whole thing. Anyway, where are, where, what, what I want to talk about if I don't, if nobody else is calling me. Um, um, you know what, since there doesn't seem to be anybody out there, Began to wonder whether I should even really be doing this. This is kind of a little embarrassing. Let me see here. Um, no, enable waiting room is not enabled, so we're okay. We're we're not. Nobody's uh, nobody's calling me. What 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 what? It, what what are you doing? I'm leaving. I'm you. Oh, there we go. Len and Barb are calling. Let's see here. Hello, Len. I remember you from a couple of weeks ago. Can you hear me, Len? All right, just got here. Hi. Can you hear me? I can. How are you? Okay, good. Terrific. Where, where's everybody? I, <laughs> I just thought I would uh, do a little pop-up show here and see if anybody wanted to join it and be part. Uh, yeah, just sitting here watching TV. I'm so fucking bored. I can't stand it anymore. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I know how you feel. And uh, but the boredom is worth it, believe it or not. Uh, I I'm not questioning that, but boy, and I need a haircut. Like now you live where, Len? I'm Livermore, California. Livermore, California. Yeah. Uh, because things are not so good out your way. No, no, everything is still closed. Um, we are we're still shut. No restaurants, no bars, no movies, no no nothing. I'll tell you what's happening here in New York but we don't want to let up is today when I first joined governor Cuomo doing his daily reports, yeah. it was about a half a month in and we hit, had been hitting, we hit the peak and he, there were like 800 deaths in one day. Yeah. Today, 26. That's still 26 people. That That's still 26 people, <laughs> but as he, it's put a lot it, better. he put it, it could be 26 people or it might not be the same 26 people you're thinking about. In other words, yeah. when we were at that high, people died of COVID. Right. Okay. They were dying of COVID. 
like crazy. All right. Um, food Junkie is joining us. Who is Food All Junkie? Right. <laughs> Hello, Food Junkie. Are you there? Your camera. I am here. Yeah. That's yeah. so funny. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Turn, or, turn, um, off your, turn off your Facebook. Turn off your Facebook. When we were at that high, people Hello. died of Food Junkie, <laughs> turn off your Facebook. Facebook is off. Okay, there we go. Now, okay. turn on your camera. I'm. You know what? It's Linux. I'm working on it. Hold on. <laughs> anyway, um, okay. Hi. Now. Do you have another name beside Food Junkie? Uh, Todd, yes. Okay, Todd. Anyway, I was just telling Len that the governor was saying that when you've got like that low a number, you don't know if those people didn't have other comorbidities that were killing them in spite of everything else. So a guy could have actually died of a heart attack, but because he was in there for COVID right. and he died as a result of the heart attack, but it was a comorbidity they listed as yeah. being, you know, so he says, we don't really know how low the number is. He said, we'll never see it go to zero for that reason. I am in Connecticut. Um, I work for the, I don't work, I serve for the first company governor's foot guard of Connecticut. We are a, vol, a volunteer militia. Pardon me, I've had a couple of beers. And I do have to say, Alex, I'm, I'm a fan from way back, uh, from, from the quake. Oh, really? That far yeah. back? Jeez, <laughs> mighty. God, are you I old. Santa, I went to Santa Clara. <laughs> are, you, are you in Connecticut? Todd, are you in Connecticut now? I am. My uh, my wife is from uh, West Hartford. So, well, how'd you? That's get the other side of the river. How'd you wind up going from the San Francisco Bay Area to the uh, uh, to Connecticut? Oh, by way of Fiji, Belize, Jamaica, and other places. But I, I'm a chef. You know, I do a lot of crafting and film catering. Oh, you you do oh. what? Crafting and film catering. Oh, I I didn't catch that last word. Crafty and film catering. Film catering. Wait, oh, crafting and film catering. Crafty. At first, I yeah, thought like you were, when you said craft, I figured you made macrame. <laughs> when you said and, and film, I whatever, that. I knew that it's food services, right? <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. That's kind of a cool occupation. I, I actually got to be in a feature film the last summer, or actually two summers ago we filmed it, it's coming out on uh, Amazon Prime here in the next weeks. Uh, called Death Blood Four. So uh, I'll have when it comes out. I'll have to let you know. You guys can go look. <laughs> no, no, absolutely. It's it's funny to be behind the scenes. Now, if I didn't see, if I didn't see Death Blood One, Two, and Three. <laughs> will, 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 I be, will I be left out of the loop or what? Uh, actually, no, because there was no one, two, or three. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Is that My the joke? Yeah, no, that, yeah, that's the joke. Actually, the first the first ten minutes of the movie are fake trailers of the one of one, two, and three. <laughs> yeah, what a great that's idea! Yeah. The guy, the guy it's, a, it's a it's really an interesting. I play a police chief, and uh, it's it was the most amazing experience I've ever had in my whole life. It was really fun. Really? How'd you manage to get into it? I mean, you're not an actor generally. No, not at all. No, I worked with the guy, and uh, he he decided to write a movie, and he wrote me a part, and I said, absolutely not. There's no way I'm ever doing that. And he talked me into it, and I'm telling you, I'm in the movie. I'm in most of the movie. I'm in virtually every scene. I mean, it was a big deal, and it's a hundred minute movie. I mean, it's a it's a real movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and if you had been uh, if you if if you had been out in this coast doing it, uh, Todd maybe could have been serving you lunch. That's right. That's right. Mm. So this was a very, this was a very low budget independent movie, of course, and uh, um, and it's on there. They've submitted it to um, Amazon Video, and they're waiting for the approval for it to hit. So now, where are you? I'm in Livermore, California. Oh, okay. Uh, I know where that is. Yeah. Well, let me let me tell you something about craft services. Okay. Every now and then we have a movie being made in our apartment house because our apartment house is a very special old building. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and, and I got to tell you, uh, 
Uh, they, they never invite us over to craft services for lunch. <laughs> no. Let me turn his audio. Oh, wait. Okay. There we go. He's, he's making a lot of noise there, so I thought yeah. I, I could. I can always mute him, and then when he sits down and wants to talk, we'll uh, we'll do it. He's he's moving his camera and everything. But um, what I was going to say earlier about about what's happening in New York, yeah. we're kind of the textbook on how to reopen and, and how to watch the metrics and how to be very careful because we reopened and as opposed to every other state that reopened that just went, okay, everybody, party time. Uh, we did it in a very methodical scientific way by looking at the data. And uh, since reopening, which was is about uh, at least part of us reopened upstate. Hello, Steve Bender. How are you? Good. How are you? Uh, ever since opening up, uh, our numbers have continued to go down. You know, so we're kind of a textbook for how this this should be done. I mean, so far it looks good. Tomorrow we could find out that, you know, all of a sudden it started zooming up. But I just right hope now, pro I hope the protests don't uh, don't make the numbers go up either. Not well, gonna, I mean, I'm down at Union Square, and um, it's been, you know, hundreds of thousands of people without masks. Uh, many of them have masks, but many don't, and they're very close. Well, yeah. the, the governor said that they're, the reason why they don't know if it will go up or not is because the, the transmission rate in New York City now is so low. We're the lowest in the country. Um, if you're over a one, then you're transmitting your disease to one other person. Some states are like one threes and one fours. We're at uh, point seven, which mm. means that we're doing very good that way. And because of that, there may not have been a high transmission rate in all those people if they were basically New Yorkers. You know what we're worried about now? People are coming in from out of state. Sure. You know. Sure. And the people, part, the people partying in the village that Cuomo was yelling at. I mean, yeah. you know, there, there are these blocks in the East Village that are just like block parties with young people drinking and congregating and no masks, nothing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He said, look, you know, if you want us to go back to, you right. know, phase zero, then we'll <laughs> do that. Yeah. You know? And he also told all the bar owners and restaurant owners, who are not living up to the rules right now, which is you can't have people inside eating in New York City. It's still not the deal. That he will rip the, their liquor license away from them. He should. He yeah. should. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Todd, you're in Connecticut. and at what, What's the Connecticut situation? I haven't looked. It's not one of the impacted states now. It's on the... Oh, wait a minute. oh I got to turn your microphone back on. Hold on a second. I muted you because you were moving around there. Un well, come on, unmute. Hey. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> there we go. Are you there, Todd? Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, how how is it up there? I mean, are they? Uh, you you okay, got. Okay. You know what? Can you hear me? Huh? What? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right. Okay, so that works. Interesting thing. Um, Cuomo set the metrics, and our governor also follows Cuomo, but I was just in Chicago, and, uh, or in Toledo, actually, but changed planes at O'Hare. Yeah. Once you're behind secure lines, apparently it's a, it's a shopping mall in, uh, you know, two years ago. It, it, I was astounded by the number of people that were not wearing masks because they were convinced they were behind a secure a secure area. Yeah, yeah. Now, did you, were you wearing a mask during all of this? I was, yeah. Yeah. Did you wear a mask on the plane? I did. And they also, they do sell the middle seats. <laughs> yeah, oh, they did. Oh, interesting. The thing I didn't, the thing I didn't like that much was, um, um, you know, that, that uh, uh, these people in, in some, when I was walking down the street today, Okay, look, first of all, let me say that a mask is not the most pleasant thing to wear, okay? Uh, no, I actually, I have mask. Yeah, but, it, you know, I mean, it, it, 
I've had to go down. I had to get some blood drawn for a blood test for my doctor so that he can see how I'm coming along on my uh, prostate stuff. And uh, it, it, I had to walk down there. And I, it's the first time I've done I had to go do this a couple of months ago. But I told the nurse, I said, I'm not leaving. I'm not going anywhere outdoors. Well, a lot of weeks ago, I felt it was starting to get safer. So I walked down. I was amazed at how many people weren't wearing masks. Yeah. You know, and um, I, it, it's, it's rude, actually, to not wear a mask. That's the one thing that a lot is lost on a lot of people. Uh, it's it is. rude because what you're doing is you're jeopardizing me. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm 80 years old. I've, I just got operated for prostate cancer, which is going to be you know fine. You're still funny. It's, huh? <laughs> it's going to be fine. But no, I said you're still funny. Yeah. Still yeah. <laughs> yeah. You are still funny. But anyway, so uh, uh, I'm, I, I'm, 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 I'm very careful. You know, I wear the gloves when I go out. A lot of people don't wear gloves because yeah. I just don't want to touch anything. Whatever. I got to be safe. So, uh when people aren't wearing masks, I feel they're jeopardizing my life. Because the mask is not going to protect me from them. My mask is going to protect them from me. And if they're wearing a mask, then we have double protection. And we don't, you can actually get within six feet of each other if you've got masks on. You yeah. Know? But it's just rude to not wear a mask. I know it's not fun. I walked, uh, I walked 10 blocks and I was panting because I couldn't breathe well through this mask. Yeah, no, I yeah. hate it. I, I get very claustrophobic. And I feel like, listen, I'm gonna, feel like I'm going to faint. I hate it. But it's mostly young people who are... We're a bunch of guys here. We all hated condoms, too. Correct. You know, <laughs> I mean, uh, but sometimes we wore them. But I think these young, these young people just think they're immortal, and it's summer, and, you know, they don't care about us. Yeah, but their aunts and uncles and their I grandmother know. and their parents are not. I know. And and they, they a lot of them have comorbidities, and you go home and you say, well, you know, this thing is only hitting other people. Yeah. You're nuts, you know, because what you, you it's just your responsibility towards other people, you know. It is. And and so I it gets me. Somebody was mentioning. I think maybe it was Cuomo that was mentioning it, but it gets me pissed when I see somebody without a mask. Oh, you mean like the commander in chief? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i took an oath i'm not supposed to laugh at that uh, no, uh, no, no. Who, who was the oath <laughs> to maskless rally right with twenty thousand people yeah. in an indoor arena which at first made me happy but yeah. then i thought these people are going to go back into their communities right and they're going to oh, spread yeah. it everywhere and he's absolutely he's making them sign something that right. says they won't sue if they get COVID. right he's well, not responsible it, meaning anyway. meaning that he admits that COVID is a possible danger at this rally. Right. And even if you want to wear a mask at the rally, I'm betting you won't because you'll be shamed by all these idiots, right? And we'll by the way, right. I can guarantee if somebody signs that paper yeah. and gets COVID and has a good lawyer, that yeah. lawyer can go in and make a case in a minute. Yeah. Absolutely. That there is that, that that in spite of the fact he signed away his their response his the responsibility yeah. of him towards it, that you knew there was a possibility of this and you let these people gather and so you are <laughs> responsible. I would like to do this. I'll use the no, 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 no. What did you, you say? Do do. Right, you can get hit by a ball and you know your ticket says you know you're waiving your rights. Yeah. They know it's a possibility, but you can't sue them for it. Right. Okay, here we are in a situation now. For the first time in my life, I actually bought flight insurance. And that right. was like the next 16 bucks. So I did it. And as I was going through with the American Airlines app, it said, oh, for $84, you can upgrade. Oh, well, why not? So I did. I got into first class, sat down, and I said, jokingly, but seriously, I, I don't smell any coffee brewing. <laughs> and they said, well, you know, Wi Fi or or food service or any in-flight services. And I said, well, I just paid to upgrade. <laughs> so the flight attendant said, well, you are allowed to downgrade. I sat in first class on a pretty much, the flight was 10% full. Downgraded, 
with the app. And I kid you not, she came to me and said, sir, you are going to have to move now. Oh, shit. Okay, now, with the flight insurance. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a You paid for the upgrade, right? Correct. Well, I got me. Uh, well, I will be refunded within 15 to 20 business days or whatever the terms are. But you downgraded while that, you were sitting in the seat? That, they are selling something that they cannot provide. I'll give you a good example. Very similar. And to that's me. what happened. My wife had, goes to Equinox, which is the gym. And it's like $2,400 a year, which to me, can't hear. to go and get on a bicycle and, and go right. nowhere is, you know, not worth 2400 bucks a year to me. But to her, it is. Well, she went and she got herself a Peloton mm. she, because they closed the gym down. Okay, pardon me. I have to interrupt. My, my Linux is not working too well, but the end of the story about the insurance is... Oh, yeah. You cannot file a claim during a COVID period. <laughs> what? They're selling these policies. Most people don't even... I've never done that, but... Okay, I'm done. Go on. Okay, no, no, where was I? Where, where was I going with uh, Peloton. Oh, yeah, so she got a Peloton, and it, it, it cost her 2400 bucks. And I said, well, you don't need the gym anymore. And right. she said, well, she says, I, I don't want the gym anyway, because what they're doing is they say if they let us back in and they open up again, we won't be able to use the showers, we won't be able to do this, we won't be able to do that. I'm going, but they're not going to stop charging you the 2400 bucks, are they? That's right. So, you know, they claim all these things that they've got to do, you know. Uh, but the fact of the matter is they don't, you know, they, 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 they're they not providing you with the services that you were guaranteed you were supposed to get. And imagine going to a gym and not having a shower for crying out loud. <laughs> It's in every industry. I mean, I'm a teacher at a very swanky, very expensive private high school. Yeah. And this whole semester, you know, usually each class meets 45 minutes, four times a week. And the classes we did all semester, we met for half an hour twice a week. So kids, parents are paying $60,000, getting a third of the education. Wow. Wow. And nobody's saying, here's a, we're going to do a little break in price for you because of the COVID. I, I wonder if people are suing them or, you know, saying, we don't get lunch. We get a very fancy lunch every day in the cafeterias. Yeah. So you don't get that. You get half as many classes. And how do you learn science without a Bunsen burner, you know, without doing experiments? <laughs> yeah. Right. So you have no facilities, nothing, and you're paying the same price. It's crazy. You take it off. Well, you know, I mean, the only way I think you could open schools safely is by having everybody live on campus and don't let them leave. And just mm. make sure everybody is vetted health-wise, right? Yeah. What about teachers and adults are going to keep them all locked yeah. Well, you know, that, hey, look at what somebody, somebody sent me this. And I, uh, it's the best toy I've ever gotten. I never, I, you see this? I, yeah. Does it vibrate? <laughs> no, but it's, it, it's the most fun thing I've ever had that doesn't. <laughs> uh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Oh, no. Is your temperature? Oh, that's great. There we go. I'm 98. Oh, boy. That's hot. Wow. Mm. <laughs> the reason I'm probably 98 is that I, I uh, have a. Uh, um, is that it's kind of warm? 98.6 is a guideline. It can be anywhere from 99, 98 yeah. to 98 again. Hmm. That's because I'm in this hot. But anyway, that, that somebody sent me that. I don't don't know the person. It just said like Mike on the on the uh, thing. And it, there we go. And I know I'm a hypochondriac. So this <laughs> this is a it's hypochondriac's probably, it's, joy. It's stealing, it's stealing your DNA. No, it's 97.9, 9, 97, 9, 98. I'm going to expect you to post your temperature every hour. Usually my temperature has been about 97.6. I'm, 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 I'm a little on the high side today. Right. But, as I say, it's warm in here. Um, so... Um, um, uh, did you anybody see the president? The video of him going down the uh, ramp. 
Now, no, but I heard about it. Yeah, he awesome. claims that it was slippery <laughs> and it was it's kind tough. of a, a steep slope. But it looked like, to me like he was having trouble walking. Was, the other guy was having no trouble. N no, he wasn't. He wasn't walking guy. with that same kind of gait. Somebody said, somebody told me that he had three inch lifts in his shoes or something like that. <laughs> He doesn't need lifts in his shoes, though. He, uh, well, he needs to be six. He needs to tower over everybody because of his fucking ego. There was a picture of someone posted I saw of Colin Kaepernick and Donald Trump, and they're both supposedly 6'3 and the same weight. And <laughs> Kaepernick totally ripped, and Trump right. with his belly hanging out. It's ridiculous. <laughs> but doesn't he have his own Twitter? Does this need to be on your channel, Alex? <laughs> Boy, I'm telling you. He can't even lift a glass of water to his mouth. Did you see that? You know, yeah. It like this. Our unit in Connecticut was requested <laughs> by the U.S. DOD. Yeah. And our governor gratefully and graciously said, you know what? You can use our planes. You will not use our, our, our men. You will not use our people. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any way, by the way, Todd, of turning your microphone down a little bit? Is it possible? I know it's possible. Yeah. Because it is somewhat louder than anybody else. In it. Nice surprise from the Supreme Court. That was good. Never yeah. six it, three. Gorsuch uh, made the decision. Yeah, yeah. So okay. three decision. <laughs> uh, six to three. Six uh, to three. And uh, this is going to drive uh, Trump nuts because he just recently tried to deny. Uh, um, uh, what do you call it? transgenders the right. ability to use health care or something right. you know and now this is uh, this will just negate that yeah i don't know does trump get up in the morning and say well whose lives can make miserable today no. I, I don't know he spends his executive time in the morning i guess you know until 11 o'clock pulling his pod i suspect he doesn't morning. sleep <laughs> he gets on the toilet he tweets yeah. He watches Fox and Friends and gets his talking points from that. Right. Speaking of which, he's really a candidate for, for what I call the uh, Elvis Presley, Lenny Bruce school of dying. <laughs> <laughs> I think he will die on the toilet. Good chance. If he's lucky. If he's lucky. <laughs> Except Lenny you know, I and and my became play. stupid. And well, Elvis could always sing, no matter how fat he was. You might not like his music, but he could always belt it out. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. exactly. My sister always said that my father was so racist that he was going to be run over by a pink Cadillac. <laughs> and this is like back in the 70s. So <laughs> I was going to paraphrase that, but if I say anything negative towards our, towards this guy. <laughs> towards Trump, yeah. Correct. But I think he deserves... To be uh, to be lynched. Yes, yeah, that's, that's too kind. Well, oh, yeah, no, there you go. <laughs> when he was born, I think they gave him an empathy bypass. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, we're bashing. Now we're bashing. Not. Well, they, why not? You know, you know I, I'm. Ever I'm gonna, seen a sign of compassion from the guy about anybody suffering? No, no, no. no absolutely not. Yeah, you know, you know when when uh when George when GW said he was in France and he said uh, is there a word for entrepreneur in French? <laughs> and asked him, could Trump possibly say, is there a word for compassion in English? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Well, the, the worst thing used to be a guy who didn't know how to spell potato, which right. is far more benign than with this. Dan guy. Quayle. Yeah, well, yeah we, 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 you know, I, I've had this joke I keep saying on the air, and fortunately, you guys don't call the show that I do at night. <laughs> I say fortunately because I can tell the joke here, and you won't say, oh, oh, that one. <laughs> but my whole, my whole line has been that, you know, compared to this president, I mean, you know, Bush didn't look that bad. No. In fact, Reagan didn't look that bad. In fact, compared to this president, Nixon was a walk in the park. And come to think of it, compared to Hitler. 
<laughs> yeah, it's getting there. <laughs> you know, I mean. My sister's husband's Jewish. Hold on. <laughs> I mean, Hitler wasn't that bad compared to this. Guy. <laughs> you know, so I, I, it, it just, you know, it's, it's, it's nuts. It's just nuts. I, this is okay, do you know why NYPD gets up early, early in the morning? Why NYPD gets up early in the morning? Why does NYPD get up early in the morning? The crowds. Huh? What'd you say? To beat the crowds. To beat the, to beat the crowds. Oh. oh, to beat the crowds. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Oh. That's you know what I can't figure out? How dumb, how stupid were these cops in Atlanta oh, man. that after a week, or two weeks of huge protests over the beating death of a guy. Yeah. They decide they're going to sh shoot and kill a guy for running away. They shoot him in the well, back. When well, yeah. 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 When they have his car and his address and his license, you know. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Let him run. Let him run. See you later, we got your address. We know where you live. Don't go home. He's drunk, <laughs> drunk and sleeping in a car. Yeah. yeah. The way that an officer could actually discharge a weapon during a traffic stop is uh, ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, it's it's ridiculous that that in given the current environment, that any cop would try that. You know. Agree, Alex. Do you agree with the fact that they canceled live PD? Do you think that was too too much, or what do you think about that? Well, um, I don't know if that was too much, but. God, I'm going to miss cops. Yeah. Who canceled yeah. live? Huh? Who canceled live? Uh, hold yeah. on. Live, live. Yeah, they, they, they canceled it because they thought it glorified police, you know, taking, uh, I guess there was okay, a was enormous okay, amount okay. of black people being arrested on live. But wait a minute, that, that theme on cops, bad boys, bad boys, what you going to do when they come for you? I guess the song was about the cops, not about the people they were Right, it's a band about. called Inner Circle <laughs> from Jamaica. So anyway, I, you know, I mean, uh, how stupid have you got to be to, in this day and age, do that? Yeah, I don't know. You know? Um, Everything's on tape. I mean, well, you can't they, the officers allegedly put on rubber gloves and went and picked up their shells. That's another issue that there were uh, there was cell phone video. I, really, it was on. <laughs> why couldn't the guys? Why couldn't the guys at Wendy's just send out like three people and tap on the window and say, "Dude, you know, you got to move." Right. right. Yeah. You know, and so what if the guy was running away? Yeah, but there you there go. Doesn't carry the. Where's the name? And where are you? You've disrespected me. I'm going to kill you. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Just the gentleman that teaches at a private school. I don't know your name. It's Steve. Steve. Where are you, Steve? I am in New York City. I am down in oh, okay. Union Square area. Down in Union Square. He's he's just down, down, down a half a town from me here. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I could never come to see him right now because I'd have to take the subway, and I figure that's a death sentence. No, I had to do it once, and I might have to do it again tomorrow. I've got dental issue, and uh, my dentist is up at 86. Oh, boy. And Uber and Via have raised their prices incredibly. I wanted to take oh. a Via, which is usually $5 to 86th Street. It was 30 bucks. Whoa. I wasn't going to spend $60 to go to the dentist. That's two stops on the right. Express. Why not? You're going to spend a thousand for the dentist. I, know. <laughs> I, went, I went down to the subway. There were, it's very clean. Um, very clean. There was hardly anyone in the car, but there were some people not wearing masks. And, hmm. uh, you know, it's ridiculous. But I came home, showered, took off my, changed my clothes, and, you know, here I am. Well, you know, I, I, I'm afraid to go down there, but I imagine it's maybe one of the safer places to be now. Because every night they're disinfecting right. those things. And on top of that, they're laying down a thin layer of a disinfectant or something that sticks to the surface of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the seats so that it's always disinfecting anything that touches it. I was surprised that on both trips, going and coming, I did not see a single officer. I thought it would be full of cops because you're know, probably running risks of mugging and no one down there. Mm. Not, a single, not a single cop. So yeah. don't, don't like it, but sometimes you have to, right? 
Well, you know, I mean, I'll use the subway once I see that the numbers are low enough and that we're not going up again. You know, I'm taking it, taking it. Is this a chance that the U.S. could actually become libertarian? Uh, no, I hope not. I don't like the libertarian. Uh, that? Uh, isn't American libertarian, libertarianism just post-capital free market? It, well, no, it I, mean, I like libertarian. It, it's it's not a political system at all. I've been, not reading, a political system. I've been reading a lot of Marx and socialism and libertarian. <laughs> what libertarian used to mean Marxian socialism? It was a. It was the same thing. It, yeah, it means in America. A euph euphemism is a paraphrase, but it was associated with Marxism. Correct. Right, but it's, libertarianism in America seems to be a very elite. Because I have a lot. Just don't fuck with anything I do. Do you call thinking elite? Well, people like, you know, Clint Eastwood and Rand Paul, you know, who don't want anything, no government in their lives at all, and don't think anybody should have any government. But they can. People with that wealth can say they don't want government. I'm saying, do you know, do you know the word cacistocracy? No. It's the opposite of an aristocracy. A cacistocracy is... A class ruled by the lowest class. Okay. Hmm. That would be a proletarian revolution. Which I, you're fine. You know, I'm, I'm a way yeah. That looks gone. Well, no. I was what I was going to say is that uh, you know, to me, libertarians are uh, kind of sissy conservatives. And, uh, <laughs> And they're, uh, uh, they're uh, well, you know what, we're pot smokers, we are the ones. That, how do I put it? They're, they're, they're the Unitarians of politics. Okay. <laughs> it's a kind of Anne Randy selfishness, isn't it? Yeah. It's breaking up like in the video. Yeah. I think it seems to me like a kind of Anne Rand selfishness, every man for himself and, you know, fuck yeah. the little guy. Well, you know, I, yeah, I, I, um, I, libertarianism is usually I hear a lot of people embracing it, but it's, it's, it's never been defined adequately for me. It's know? pretty much who we are as people. It is not a political system. It's, you know what, in a political system, yes, the Libertarian Party says guard the borders, uh, uh, defend the borders. But yeah. if you are a libertarian, you know what? I'm a libertarian person. I actually ran for office in North Carolina once as a joke. Yeah. <laughs> but well, it, it should be about liberty, right? That's the let, let me ask you, let me ask you, Todd, did they laugh? At the time, the federal government had just like uh, taken away about $8 billion from the state of North Carolina. They defunded tobacco. And I had just graduated from college and in Santa Clara in California, where I listened to you on the quake, and uh, <laughs> had this brilliant idea that I would run for office and say, you know what, you have all this arid land that you were growing tobacco that is going after a weed. Well, you know what? I was definitely a libertarian in the eyes of a North Carolinian, but I only did that because Elizabeth Dole's mom lived in North Carolina, and she ran for Senate. I also had a mom that retired in North Carolina, and but understanding how the politics of that of that mix works in in the south in the early 90s was very difficult how did One, you, how did you do in that election i got 20 percent of votes against a five-term incumbent that's not, not bad. bad no that's not bad at all so on the legalization platform in 1992 it was impressive wow Wow. Well, now we and now you now you talk about Rand Paul being libertarian, and yet, you know, he he's all for less government, and yet he's part of the government. I mean, how do you how do you say I'm against government? That's why I'm going to run for the Senate. You can do that if you are in government. Yeah. There are a lot of people in government trying to destroy it from within right now, right? Yeah. yeah. You, you look at all the people in charge of, that Trump puts in charge of these agencies who say, <laughs> they want to get rid of these agencies. 
everyone knows the phrase talking heads. Yeah. And David Byrne was brilliant by continuing the idea and teaching us that CNN, you know, they're just yeah, like Marshall McLuhan, for Christ's sakes, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. You know, it, it's, uh, we live in strange times. You know, I mean, I've lived a awfully long life now. Uh, how I got to this age, I'll never know. That's someone <laughs> killing me first, especially a woman. You entertain the souls of very many people in your life that you have no idea about. <laughs> but anyway, I uh, uh, so Did I. Did you copy uh, that? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, you know, if I've entertained some people, I'm happy for that. Okay, but you know, but the point is, uh, I. Where was I? <laughs> you you wondered how you lived this long. Oh, <laughs> Just how I live this long. Time. Uh, no, no, in all the time that I've lived, I've never seen it this bad. This yeah. is the worst confluence of negative stuff that's ever happened while I was here, you know, in my yeah. lifetime. I was wondering about, is it worse than Vietnam and the assassinations, you know? You know I think it's, I, I, well, yeah, the assassinations are one-time events, uh, you know. They were beating people in the streets yeah, but, but, regularly. You know, and and Vietnam was a terrible, terrible situation. Oh, no. And, and uh, but this, on a basis of how many, I mean, you gotta remember, so far, oh, look who's here. My my wife is here. Hi. Hello. Hello. She came in. She does this every night. She He's says, my tester. I can't help it. I do is not the, know. Uh, is the pasta done? He's done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, you, you know you know Alex. <laughs> she's letting her hair go, go gray too. It's like yeah. right now she's looking. She's crazy. letting it. I'm I'm letting my hair go gray as well. I'm actually letting my hair grow less. I decided yeah. not to shave. No. Yeah, same. I mean, let's face it. This whole thing, the worst thing about the whole COVID thing, it just made us give up. You know, yeah. uh, we just let ourselves go to. Uh, yesterday, it got to be about nine o'clock at night, and I said to my wife, I said, Do you realize neither of us have put pants on today? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's the worst part about it, you know. Um, <laughs> so, I, I, you know, you got to. He's in house. He's a uh, Korean army. He's army. I'd say what we've got now, let's, okay, let's compare it to Vietnam. How many people died in, in Vietnam? 60,000? 60,000. About 59,000. In the words of Paul Hardcastle, the age was 19. Yeah. Do you remember that song, yeah. Paul Hardcastle? Yeah. 19. Yeah. No, no, no. Okay. How many, how many, how many 59,000. So, so far, this disease killed 116,000. Correct. Yeah. And that may be a low number. Because right. maybe a lot of people died at home, didn't report it. So, uh, you know, uh, already we have over double the deaths that happened in Vietnam, and that was over a four-year period. This is over a three-month period. Yeah. So, uh, and that compared with the demonstrations because of uh, what happened to uh, Floyd, uh, I would say the confluence of the two make this maybe one of the most arduous times we've gone through absolutely you know i mean i, I know nothing i mean th this disease this, this flu has closed down the entire country it's 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 made people uh paupers uh, they don't know where the next meal is coming from and when they it's before this started, marketplace. before this all started they had a good job mm -hmm. now, i imagine Todd, that in your job, how's it being affected? Nobody's making movies right now, are they? Uh, it's a lot of subcontracting now. Like uh, we were scheduled to do uh, the food that built America season two, and it is now it's gone from a crew of ninety to twelve crews. There are like six crews, different spots. I had to subcontract, but the work is still happening. It's just, we have, our marketplace is now restructured. What do you think is going to happen to the movie business in general? 
I see no downfall in it whatsoever. Ideas will never stop happening, but I don't see. Yeah, I, think, I think movie theaters are a thing of the past. Yeah. I think, I think that it's all going to be home, you know. Well, when was the last time you went to a theater? Well, I would go for a 3D movie, okay, and that's about it. But here's the thing. Uh, saw a, a picture this weekend, King of Staten Island. Hmm. Um, a film that if it were released into theaters right now, would probably not do very well. Make about $20. Yeah. But it, is, it is Judd Apatow, right? He's big. Yeah, yeah, but he's big, but I don't think he would, this picture would get a large audience. All I don't right? get the Pete Davidson thing, but go ahead, sorry. Well, Pete, he's very good. He's, <laughs> I actually, good. He's, he's very good. I had this taste in my mouth for Pete Davidson after his uh, political commentary, but I actually, my son is in film school. And I'm fortunately exposed to a lot of unnecessary commentary as film students do. That that was actually a great performance, okay. and I I haven't seen it. But anyway, the movie the movie is the kind of movie that would not do very well in the theaters, and then they'll re release it to home video, and uh, it would do somewhat better, I think, in that venue. But now that it's been released directly to the home, as opposed to the theater, I think it's going to do killer business. I think he's going to make more money with that picture than he would have made if been than if it had been released to the theater. Didn't some movie last week get zero on Rotten Tomatoes or something, and it's doing great <laughs> business on Netflix? I think. <laughs> well, uh, uh, it, it, uh, who knows? Uh, uh, the. Um, the the pictures that are is one picture what was it trolls world right. tour that made a gazillion dollars right? they, they had it sitting there and they're going what do we do with it do we wait till release it in the fall no let's release it directly to home it made more money they said than they would have possibly ever made releasing it to theaters and the theaters player. are now getting afraid because the movie companies are saying we don't need the theater you know, stupid question. What'd stupid you say? Question that I don't understand. A stupid question. So if a movie's on Netflix, yeah, and a gazillion people watch it, right? Does that make money? For yes. No. No. It makes for Netflix, yes, because they invested in the production and they've already paid everything. They make their money from the subscription. Alex, please go on. No, they make money from the subscription, but the actual filmmaker is not going to see a percentage of the profits, okay? Right. Correct. Netflix isn't going to say, well, we got so many new subscribers this week and we'll give you a percentage <laughs> of that. No. So if you're going to make a movie for Netflix, they'll pay you a lot of money to do it. But are people because, actually subscribing to Netflix to watch The Prince of Staten Island, The King of Staten Island? Well, or they just have not, but it's not, it, it's not, that's not on Netflix. That's well, just- been on Netflix for almost 15 years when there were DVDs. Well, I, I think no more DVDs now. I mean, no, no, I, I know you can actually, there is a DVD subscription program on Netflix, right. but my point is Netflix, they actually started out selling DVDs. Right. Well, no, renting. Well, correct. Renting. Sending them to you. Yeah. yeah. And when they tried to get rid of the rental part of it, because the other Netflix was doing so well, there was a big hue and cry, so they kept it going. So you can still rent movies from Netflix. And they've got a far better selection of films on the rental than they do on the streaming. Oh, I, I imagine. Yeah. Wait, there, there was a vice president that invented the internet, and that changed everything. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but, I mean, it, 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 Netflix has changed the whole method of making films as well because they it's make movies that get I mean, nominated for Academy Awards for crying out loud, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that after the smoke is cleared with this whole thing, I think you're going to see AMC says they're probably going out of business as a movie chain. Uh, they're closing down something like 300 of their theaters. Alex, when you first got, well, uh, I got to formulate this question. How hard was it to get a job with your opinion on radio? Uh, it wasn't difficult at all. You, you know, because what happened was when I first started doing talk radio, 
I was on a station here in New York called WMCA. And there was me, big lefty kid with hair down to here. And there was a guy named Bob Grant who was a, a screaming right winger. And you had several different people with several different opinions on every station. So that they never asked you what your political opinion was. They just asked you if you could do a good show. And they would listen okay. to your audition tapes and say, yeah, well, we'll, we'll take you. So that I was never, ever asked that question. Wait, now, the only, audio is breaking up right now. It was only, can you hear me okay right now? It was only, it was only at that time, on at a time when, uh, when the uh, FCC did away with the equal time provisions. Okay. And a guy by the name of Rush Limbaugh decided, <sighs> hey, I don't have to give equal time to other people to reply to what I'm saying here. I can just say whatever I want. And he became very popular and he was very entertaining. You know, I mean, I, I talk about Rush many times, say good professional broadcaster. Uh, and, but that just let the floodgates open because people got the wrong idea that because he was a right winger, that was the way to go. And so it was a left winger. It became very difficult to get a job. So that's why I kind of went back to the kind of talk I was doing in San Francisco, which was basically comedy, you know, entertainment talk. Uh, I was saying that, that Robin Williams was a ripoff artist. What? You say he was and a ripoff artist? Robin Williams. Ripoff artist. Jonathan Winters. Well, he got it all from Jonathan Winters, but he'd be the first to say that. Yeah, and all of us, all of us had our our, um, what can we call it, our hero. You told a story about going to Africa once. Hmm? You told a story about going to Africa once. I've and you never, went, I've never been to Africa. To this village. And some various things happened. I was entertained by that story to this day. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I never told a story like that. I've never been to Africa. On the air. You had a guest that went to Africa. Oh, a guest that went to Africa. Yes, <laughs> He goes to this African village and he was held up by everyone and like everyone in the village gave him a blowjob. Do you remember that? No. <laughs> <That's> memorable. <laughs> but then again, I've done in my lifetime, I don't know, I should go should go back and try and count it, at least three thousand <laughs> programs. Uh, so to remember anyone in particular is rather difficult. And uh, whoever told the story probably didn't use the word blowjob. He had to use some other word because it was not, you know, it was not a satellite show. He was a, a priest or a, a minister, not a ministry. Oh, I know who you, no, maybe no, I don't know. Are you if you to... know, he was on a mission and his story was not about. Oh, no, I had a guy on once. With the surprise that, oh my, go ahead. Who wrote a book called Keep the River on the Left. And he went to the Amazon and lived with a tribe down there. Okay. Now, I don't know if I ever had him on my show in San Francisco. I know I had him on my show in New York. And they made a movie about it. They did a movie called Keep the River. No, Left. this was on the radio. Yeah. I know. Well, I interviewed this guy originally on my radio show in New York. I, was, I may have redone. Okay, now my audio is breaking up. I, I may have redone him when that movie came out for San Francisco. But, you know, I don't remember it. Um, so anyway, my last question, because I'm we're going to get out of here in a couple of minutes, is basically, what do you think is going to happen in the fall? Who do you think is going to be president of the United States when this smoke? Trump. Over? You think so, huh? Think Why? So. I, I, I called Trump last time. I, I really don't think so this time. Uh, but who knows, right? You know, we'll see. If, if Biden's going to pick an African American woman as his running mate, what is he waiting for? I mean, now would seem the time to get someone out there as a bulldog. Chicago, or you know, but while he's yeah. sitting in the ba in his basement, get Kamala or whoever out there. Yeah. You know. Uh, we do not want Kamala Harris. <laughs> I love Kamala Harris. I don't love Joe Biden, but I'll take a 
retarded raccoon over this idiot. Yeah, yeah it's amazing. You know, it's kind of like it's, it's two o'clock in the morning and the bar's closing. You grab the first woman who'll have you, you know, and in this case, this is the bar closing. You know, I don't care. I'm not a big fan of Joe Biden, but hell, I'll take him. Yeah, I, liked him I liked him 30 years ago. All I care about is that Joe Biden I, can win. I like Bernie. I like Bernie too, but Bernie's not the candidate. Yeah, Bernie, Bernie, no, no. I don't think We're Bernie is right. capable of winning as Biden. I don't think, I think Biden is the political tactician type, you know. In, in this moment, I wonder with the health care and, you know, Bernie's, issues they might resonate much more now than they did earlier who knows well you know well, we have an electoral college and unfortunately our vote really doesn't matter but i'm well, well, I I don't like, what, what i like to say to trump people, will negotiate his win what i like to say to people is uh how bad does socialism look to you now <laughs> we are it, well, no, it, it's not. We adopt socialism. But for everybody that knocks it, how many people are out of work right now that really wish we were socialistic? You know, I have six employees that will not come back to work because they're making nine hundred dollars a week. <laughs> really? That's just nuts. Can you fire them if they don't come back? I, I. I should. <laughs> you know, you're, you're forced to offer them their job back, right? So they should either take it or leave yeah, it. I, I didn't apply for a PPP loan. Okay. Uh, but seriously, the point is, is where's the dedication now? It's, you know what, you know, I'll pick up one delivery here and there. Or I can do this. But I also do in-flight catering for private jets. Yeah. And that's a huge markup. But to get... These kids could make 300 bucks on one drop off as a tip. And no, uh, no. And I'm saying kids because I was one. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Len, are you okay? Um, because we're about to wrap up here. Oh, say hi to my wife. Hi, wife. Hi. That must be, I just got home from that, must be, <laughs> that must be Barb. That's Barb. And that would be me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we She's were just, the Connecticut girl. We were, just, we were just talking here. We were, we were, we were talking here about uh, about Biden and who's going to win and who isn't going to win. And oh yeah, I have to keep her from going to a Trump rally with a gun. So. <laughs> but he would let you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, hey, listen, uh, it's good yeah. talking to all you guys. Um, Thanks I for doing this. I'm going to do gonna, an hour. And, I'm going to yeah. watch for you when you come on because I really enjoy this. Yeah, so well, please do. Fun. And the same Thank with you, too. Steve, and the same That's with you, pleasure. food uh, junkie. Like and now I know why you call yourself food junkie. <laughs> Just speaking of comedy, have you watched the Chappelle 25 minutes on George Yeah, Floyd? yeah. It's, it's not powerful. funny. It, it's well, not funny, funny, but powerful. But, but it's powerful. Yeah, absolutely, uh, absolutely. Dave Chappelle is from Ohio. Yes, he is. He they is. say that's on Netflix, but I can't find it on Netflix. It I on found Netflix. it on it's YouTube. Nice, I saw it online. I don't know if it's on Netflix. Yeah, YouTube. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, I, listen, uh, Lynn, thank you. Okay. Thank you to, to you, uh, Todd, and thank you, Steve, and I hope we'll see you again uh, sometime very soon. You okay? Have a good day. Uh, Always good to say this. Long time listener, first time caller. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you for uh, uh, thank you thank you for calling. I appreciate all right, have a it. Good I really one. do. Okay, bye all of you. Bye. All. And uh, let me just say, uh, they'll be going away here any second. I didn't click off yet. But you didn't click off yet. There's, I'm still here, folks, to say goodbye to the audience. Uh, and uh, look, look, look at my look at my arm where they stuck me with a thing this morning. Anyway. Uh, have a stay safe, everybody. Okay, and we'll see you very, very soon, and do this again because it's a lot of fun. Spy versus spy tattoo. <laughs> okay, bye bye. All right, bye.